And they told them and said, We came to the land which thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the children be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and the coast of Jordan. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We are not able to go against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought an evil report of the land, which they searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land, though we go to search it, is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw are men of great stature. Here's our verse of victory, and there which she saw giants, and the sons of Anak, which were of come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were we in their sight. Amen. We're going to stop right there, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to tag this text this morning from the vault. I've come far enough to win. Amen. Look at your name and say, I've come far enough to win. I've, I've come far enough to win. I'm talking to some people on the brink of victory this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2017, a religious group of religious leaders from various faiths gathered in peaceful protest in the U.S. Capitol. This protest was in response to what they deemed to be an unfair health care and unreasonable budget proposals. As a result of this peaceful protest, uh, police officers assigned to the U.S. Capitol escorted these religious faith leaders out by arrest. On January the 20th of 2021, these officers, same officers, assigned to the same capital, U.S. Capitol building, confronted one of these faith leaders again. These officers serving in the same duty station, the man dependent upon the same God, but the officers were given a different directive. Somebody say different. different. Now, instead of escorting this man out on January the 20th of 2021, they escorted this man to his new office. Ladies and gentlemen, that man was the pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church of Atlanta, Georgia, by the name of Reverend Raphael Warnock. Just a few years ago, four years ago, he was arrested in the state capitol building. That day on January the 20th and 21st, he wasn't escorted out. He was escorted in. Just this week, December the 6th, he was re-elected again and escorted again. Look at your name and say, God will do it again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ladies, this can I just tell ladies and gentlemen this morning that the reason some of your enemies have lived so long is because God has given them an assignment to participate in your next promotion. They're not going to be able to watch it from afar. But God say, I'm not just going to let them perceive it, but I'm going to have them to participate in it. Can I just tell somebody that some of your enemies are about to become your allies? They are about to become your escort. They that escorted you out are about to escort you in. Somebody say, I'm going in. I wonder if there's somebody that can think back over your life and testify that been some times some people that escorted me off a job. They done escorted me out of places. They done tried to reject me. But they were the same ones that God made uh, way in the table in front of my enemies. Anybody, if you God ever made a table in the presence. We learned an interesting lesson, Brother Kerr, from Reverend Wafford L. Warnock's journey. Because what we learn is, I want y'all to catch this phrase this morning, just because somebody else's name is on it, don't mean your name's not in it. I'm going to say that again, we learned through his journey that, that just because somebody else's name is on it, don't mean that your name, Minister Williams, is not in it. Ladies and gentlemen, the officers, their name was on a roll sheet when they got there to roll call. That name was on a booking card when they took him as the arresting officer. As a matter of fact, that name uh, is going to be on the roster as long as they're assigned to the building. But if they are moved to another duty station, that name will not be on it. But Reverend Raphael Warnock, now that he has gotten to position in the house, in the Senate, when he leaves, that's not only going to be his name, 
name. But they're going to have to put his picture up and his name is going to be stamped forever. The officer's name on it was temporary. But his name in it is going to last forever. Lord, I hope I bless somebody right here this morning and just tell you this morning that what God's about to put you in is going to be for legacy. But what God put the assignment on the enemy is only to give you a lift. Can I take your Bible for a moment? He said, I'll make your enemies your footstool. I say, anybody in here ever had some footstools in your life? All you need to do is just prophesy with your body language and start to step. I'm talking to some people that's got some folks they know you on your job. I'm talking to some people that's running into some opposition. I'm talking to some people that had your name scandalized this year. You need to start stepping because God said all the thing that I'm about to do is let your enemies give you a lift. Anybody can thank God in here. My enemies are lifting me. For the first time, find a praiser in your proximity and say, neighbor, my enemies are lifting me high. Thank God they talked about me. Thank God they scandalized me. Thank God they fired me. Thank God they escorted me out because God's about to make them escort me back in. Look at somebody and say, they lift it. I need you to look at somebody tomorrow when they see somebody the way. I need you to say thank you for lifting me. Yeah. When they try to say something sarcastic about what you will at work, thank God for lifting me. I'm talking to a kid that's got a teenager that's got to go to school tomorrow. And even some of your friends that you know that's hating you, just say thank you for lifting me. Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, that's where we are in the text. Uh, there is ownership and there is occupy. Uh, because ladies and gentlemen, what we find in the text is, is that God has told Israel that you shall have this land of Canaan as a promised land. And even though your name is in it, somebody else's name is on it. Y'all heard, y'all read the text when they said the Hittites, the Amorites, the, the Malachites, the, their name is on it. The giants are in the land. The, their name is on it. But God has already said your name is in it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, they, this is where we pick up the text at, ladies and gentlemen, because they have arrived at the break of victory. Somebody say the break of victory. They travel. They've been going through the wilderness for, for years, Deacon Green. And, and now that they got into the break, Moses, the story says Moses sends out 12 spies. He sends our, our spies out from the 12 tribes of Israel. They go out. He sends out one from each tribe. They go and they look at the land. It says 10 of them come back with an evil report saying we cannot take the land. There are too 